All right, so for this video, we're gonna be building our own SQL fiddle using Docker and Visual Studio Code. And the goal of this video is to create a unified view of our data analysis environment by maximizing the mileage of your editor. We're gonna be using Visual Studio Codes while minimizing the context switching between multiple tabs, windows, etc. Now, if you've worked with databases, you're probably familiar with a scenario where you've got your Postgres connection and PG admin in one window, you've got your text editor in another window, you've got a terminal open. So we're gonna try to get rid of all of that and actually remain inside VS Code for the duration of this video. So let's go ahead and get started. First step is pulling our Docker image and we'll be using the official PostgreSQL Docker image available on Docker Hub. The link will be in the description. You can see here that you can choose from multiple versions. We're gonna be going with latest. And another thing I wanna point out here is the section on initialization scripts. And what this is essentially telling you is that uh, the image is gonna come built with this directory here and any SQL, shell, etc. files that you drop inside this directory that you copy over into this directory will be executed during initialization of the Docker container. So later on in the video, we're actually gonna be copying this shell script here and customizing this psql command to create our own base table that we can start querying right away as soon as the container is launched. So we're gonna start with a very basic docker compose file. So docker compose is a syntax that allows you to specify multiple containers to run together in a single application. Usually it'll be a little bit more uh, verbose than this. Usually you'll have more than one container. So you might have Postgres as your backend, and then you might have a web server container that contain that connects to your Postgres backend. So we're gonna start, uh, we're actually just gonna do a single container for Postgres. I'm gonna save this. And the main thing to point out is the name of the image that we want to pull from Docker Hub and the version. Now this could be something like 9.6. Uh, we're gonna stick to latest because we don't really care what the version is. And the other thing is to uh, expose port 5432. This is the default port for PostgreSQL. And when we run this, it will actually throw an error. And I'm doing that on purpose to show you how to debug a failed container instantiation. So let's go ahead and run it. Uh, we're gonna open up a new terminal and uh, please note that we are in the, the same directory as our compose file, which allows us to very easily do docker compose up dash D. Dash D stands for daemon mode, allowing it to run in the background. So the first thing that it's gonna do, it's gonna pull our image from Docker Hub. This might take uh, you know a minute or so, depending on your network. But after that, you should actually see the image inside of your images tab uh, within the Docker Visual Studio Code extension. So now we've got a container called PG SQL Docker Fiddle. And here is, uh, looks like there's nothing in this drop down menu because it exited. Okay, so the container has failed and let's check out to see if we can debug it. So if we do a Docker PS, this will give us a list of running containers and we, you can see that there's no containers running. So do a docker ps-a and this will show you uh, failed containers. So this one exited 33 seconds ago. Uh, if we copy the name of the container, we can go ahead and do a docker logs-f and then paste the title. And you can see here that it failed because the super user and password is not specified. Now we wanna keep this environment pretty lightweight. So I actually don't wanna worry about this right now. I am just gonna go ahead and copy this environment variable and I am gonna add it here. So let's go ahead and do environment and then paste it right here. And actually that's not the correct syntax. We have to uh, use a colon, there we go. So 
let's go ahead and uh let's clean up let's just bring um our service down and i'm going to do a docker prune um, i probably don't need to do this but this is a good example of how if you're seeing a lot of failures and you just want to restart from scratch this is a good way to do it it will delete practically it's essentially like clearing history of your docker environment of your of your machine i like to do this every now and then especially when i'm uh, setting up a new project or if i'm seeing a lot of weird errors and i'm struggling with debugging it so let's go ahead and rerun docker compose up and then do a docker ps all right so now our container is running we can check our logs and uh, we can see that the database system is ready to accept connection. So perfect. Looks like this trick worked. Um, of course, this is not a best practice. So in a later video, we'll be going back over this to show you guys how to enable authentication uh, if you so desire. So we stood up a container, but we don't have any data. Now we can connect to it, run some DDL scripts, um, and populate some tables into a schema. But I don't wanna to have to do this every time I launch a container. I want it to be done during startup. So uh, remember we went over this initialization scripts section in the documentation and it teaches you how to add a simple shell script that will create a user, create a database and uh, do some privilege customization uh on startup so what we're actually going to do is we're going to copy uh this file and we're going to create a new script directory and we're going to create a new file called init user db.sh this is going to be a shell script and let's just go ahead and take this entire block paste it here and now we can uh customize this portion, this is the actual SQL code that will be executed. So we can customize this as we see fit. So I've gone ahead and rewritten this block of code here. You can see that I'm creating a user called Docker with a database called test. And I'm gonna create a schema called fiddle. And I'm gonna grant all on schema fiddle to user Docker and then customize the search path here so we can uh, query from the so that we can query tables from the fiddle schema without having to write out the fully qualified table name and there will be a link to the postgresql docs that will explain a uh, search path a little better in the description so we've created a user a database and a schema and we want to go ahead and create a table as well so i'm going to start uh, a new file and this is just going to be called create table.sql so let's check it out here and I'm going to paste just some really really simple DDL this is going to be an employees table you've probably uh, seen a table like this in many SQL tutorials and uh, so we've got a shell script and we've got a SQL script and what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and add a second eSQL command in order to execute this shell script as well. So this is going to look similar to the first, except now that we've created a new user and a new database, we can use that user and database to execute our second script. So we'll do p sql uh, dash v username docker db name will be test and f uh, dash f allows us to pass a script. So we're going to go ahead and do script create table.sql. So there is one problem here, and that is that neither the shell script that we created or the SQL script exist on our container, right? So how do we copy these over? Now there is a really easy way to do this uh, in Compose, that's using volumes. So I'm going to go ahead and add some volumes here. I'm just going to paste this here. And so this is going to be two mappings. And when I say a mapping, I mean, uh, you've got a list of key value pairs. So this is a key and uh, this is a value. So what this is essentially saying is copy init user DB from my local file system from this directory here to the Docker entry point init DB directory on the container. Remember here, this 
documentation tells us that any SQL and, SH and .sh files inside this directory are going to get executed uh, during initialization. That's exactly what we want. So we want to copy init user db and create table.sql to this Docker entry point init db and to this script directory. Now we're just creating this uh, just to differentiate from this directory. We we it's the shell script that's executing the SQL script, right? So only the shell script has to be inside this initdb.d directory. Uh, this other script can be anywhere else. It can be in root. Um, I've added it to a script directory just to uh, just to mimic uh, the way that it exists on our local file system. Now, depending on your file system, uh, you may or may not get a permission denied error when trying to load these scripts into the container because uh, the Docker image uh, or the user on the Docker container might not have access to it. So one uh, quick thing we can do is just do chmod 777 on everything inside script and that should take care of that permission denied error. Again, you may or may not get it. So now let's go ahead and spin up our service. We'll do docker-compose up-d and let's confirm that our container is running. We'll do a docker ps, copy the name and do a docker logs-f and let's check out some of these logs here. Okay, Postgres, Postgres SQL init process complete, ready for startup and the database system is ready to accept connection. Excellent, so it looks like we're up and running. And uh, throughout this video, I've been using the command line because I do think it's important to become, uh, to familiarize yourself with the Docker uh, CLI. However, uh, VS Code does allow you to do some really cool things with this uh, Docker integration. For example, if I wanted to check the logs, I could uh, right click and click view logs and I'll get the same output. Also, uh, if I wanted to confirm that these two files were copied over, I can drill down here, go to files, and there's our Docker entry point DB, and there's our init user DB script. So again, we copied it from the file system, from our local file system to the container, and we can probably scroll down and find our script, and there it is. So we've got our container up and running, and now the only thing left to do is to connect to the database and start executing some queries. So uh, if you saw the readme, you should have uh, already downloaded the Postgres SQL extension. It's gonna come with some hotkeys that uh, allow you to interact with it very easily. On a Mac, we're gonna do Command Shift P. We're gonna do New Query, and it's gonna, uh, it's gonna prompt me to choose a connection profile. I'm gonna create a new one, and the host is gonna be local host. The database to connect to is gonna be test. This is, uh, these are essentially the same params that we used in this init user DB shell script. The username, if you remember, it's gonna be Docker. Uh, no password right now, default port, enter a profile. I'll call this new profile. And profile is created and connected. So let's go ahead and see if we can check out our table. I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna save this to I'm call this query dot sql so now that we've got the file saved we can go ahead and highlight the portion of code we want to execute right click go down to execute query and it's going to prompt me for a connection again and on the right we see a results tab pop up we've got the output of our query here we've got three rows in our table and the standard postgres messages log that you're probably used to seeing if you're familiar with pg admin So to recap, at the beginning of the video, you probably noticed this image in the readme file, which was supposed to represent the end result here. And that's sort of what we've got here, right? We've got our querying environment, we've got our results and our messages. We can uh, just go over it again with a more interesting query here to get the second highest salary from the table. So I can highlight this again, as you saw before execute query and it should output 200 on the right so that's it for this video thank you for watching 
as I mentioned earlier, there will be a brief follow-up just to drill down into a couple other features in the Docker Compose file as we set up authentication for our Dockerized PostgreSQL.